Radio Rana, and welcome to FM Tahiti. Hope you're all doing well. Um, we've come back for a couple of league games, or a league game and a cup game, maybe, uh, seeing how he feels. The first game's going to be against uh, Moria Island, the uh, Yellow Lizards. Uh, but I have to show you the schedule so you can see what we've missed in between. Um, so the most recent matches, um, was the Pete match um, in the league, and it kind of went backwards and forwards. They took the lead, went 2-0 up, all looked doom and gloom until Yannick Janin scored a penalty, and then Gerard popped up with a brace. So Gerard pretty much cemented that kind of pressing forward role. He does much better in it than Yannick does, or vice versa when the swaps round generally the roles. So we'll be giving Gerard that first choice. So you're going to play against Moria, the kind of, I don't want to say fallen giants, but they won the first premiership title, so they've and they've also got a couple of cups, uh, regional cups to their names, so they're pretty decent. But they didn't do particularly well last season. Looking at the league, um, where are we? So about five games, four to five, or four to six games played for most teams because of the different cup competitions. We've got seven points after five. It's not uh, fantastic, but we'll we'll take it for the moment whilst we kind of bed in. I've tweaked the tactics a little bit. I've changed the distribution and things like that to see if that will just eke out a few extra points because we've not been playing that consistently. Uh, but the under-19s Oceana um, Championships are done. TT Society's won it and they beat the Australians in the finals. The Australians did all right. Um, but most importantly for us, it means all of our players are back now. No one's on international duty for the senior team of the under-19s. So we've got a full squad to pick from, so we can start rotating and not drop off too much. Maria in fourth, uh, who are in Islanders, who won the OCL and now have their title-winning manager from Bora Bora um, in first place. And Weirdly, Tupai and uh, Meow are doing quite well. Could just be a flash. Bora Bora, not so good. Sky Bright's not so good as well. So we'll see how this goes, etc. So a lot of the strong teams from last season haven't had a great start. So we're going to stick with this team, Jared and Yannin, see how this partnership goes. Um, I brought in Anderweg, centre back to rest Chance, because he's getting a little bit tired. And Makasina is meant to be better than Salaberry, so I'm giving him another start now he's rested. I don't really know what my first or choice 11 is. I know roughly, but I've got competition in reasonable kind of places. Um, expect to win, to be honest. I mean, they are pretty strong, so maybe that was a little bit too assertive, but no one seemed to be bothered. That's the beauty of them not listening to you during a team talk. You can say what you want and they don't care either way. So I've changed the distribution from the goalkeeper to the fullbacks, partly based on what my assistant manager said in that we're strong on the flanks, so distribute to the fullbacks, and we also suggested playing down the left because that's where we're strongest. I've, I've not done that, but I've told him just to distribute to the fullbacks to see how that changes things. Originally in the first season I had it distributing to the centre backs and to like then lob it forwards. And that worked, obviously, because we did quite well, but then last season not so much. I think there's probably less time and space for them because the standard was slightly better. So if our fullbacks are the best, that's where they can go. Naren Donna picks that one up. Charging forwards, he has absolutely no options. I mean reason you know, shot, but could have done with actually having some options in front of him. Such a good counter attack, it took us out by surprise as well. I'm wondering if we need to press more, because that will improve things. We're giving them a lot of space. Oh, good tackle by Weaver. Come on, Richards. Driving forwards, terrible pass. I mean, I could see what he was trying to do, but no one else could see that, and that's why it was a bad pass. Oh, Chadwick is the Jono Chadwick of... Uh... Okay, good girl, Jono. Good girl. Um, he is the central midfielder, defensive midfielder, who used to play, I think, for Union Rimatari. We tried to get him. Lost out to Moria, and then every season we put in a bid for him, and he, he never wants to come to us because I guess Moria are better than us. But yeah, he's a good player, probably one of the Austral Islands star internationals. 
Mm. So despite me... Oh, we had that. Oh, that's a good goal as well. William Nagatoka. Imagine he's from the Bass Islands. That name. Say before that goal, what I was going to say is... Um, I don't want to see that again. Um, that not necessarily... I shouldn't really have expected the team to be able to beat Mori, especially the form we're currently in. But we have to be winning these matches. We have to be in a good run of form at the start of the season, really, if we want to get to the OCL. It's a good double save-ish, then. I think with every match we play, it's becoming clearer that the OCL is going to be a crap. That was not well defended. Was that Anderweg who was meant to be? I think it's Anderweg. You know, it isn't. It's Lamb. Lamb fell asleep there. Hmm. I think the side we've played in the past and been quite close with Moria. We've lost them in the past, but not necessarily by huge amounts or by a deserved amount. Oh, God, Yannick. Go on. It's fighting. See, in the past seasons when we've played them or lost them, it's been close, but 3 0 seems reasonable for them at the moment. Maybe this is their season, this is their kind of resurgence. They dropped in the reputation rankings over the summer from being top third or something like that because uh, the Eels obviously won the OCL, which gave them much more of a boost than any of the domestic competitions. Yanin, lay off. Let's see what Manuel's trying to do. I mean, Smith's busting out some good saves, but he's also let three in. That was not great. This is an absolute rout. And it's only half an hour. Maybe I just want to show you a second game after this, because I'll be busy, like, crying in a corner, rocking backs and forwards. I don't really know what to do. Because two of the goals have been good long shots. Um, yeah. Oh, Jared's through. Come on. Smacks it against the post. It's going to be one of those games, isn't it? Yeah, they've had two long shots and then two set pieces. Two goals from the corner. So he's better in the air than us, for definite. Is oh, we don't want to scramble. I don't know. To, I think at half time, I'm just gonna actually pause the recording and have a think about what we can do to try and save this. It's not gonna be the wide target man formation, I don't think that's ready. I think there are some flaws in there that I've been spotting. Who I can have come on and make a difference. There's not really a ton of them. Right, I'm literally going to pause the recording and think about this. Okay, made a few quick changes. I don't think they're going to make any difference. It's worth a try. So first of all, I've changed uh, this to counter press because I need to get the ball back. They can just sit back now and do nothing. Um, and increase the intensity as well. Increase the line of engagement, so we're pushing them a bit further. And then... Subwise waits on for Manuel because Manuel was on a yellow and wasn't really doing much. His passes were going a bit astray. And then Chisholm on for Yannick because Yannick's a bit younger. Chisholm's got a bit more experience and he's better in that target man kind of role. So we'll see what this does. I imagine nothing. I also shouted at them aggressively um, and it motivated almost all of them, apart from I think Manuel actually. Um, so hopefully. We'll play better. In some ways, it's kind of an interesting 
scenario. Sometimes it's quite good to be on the end of a thumping. This is what I'm telling myself anyway. Because then you can try something different tactically. It forces your hand. I mean, all right, Narendana. Exactly one of those Letitia girls. If you're a fan of Letitia, um, you should watch the PSU plays at Guernsey at Island FC series. Um, because Letitia's brother is the chairman of the, the club on that and they're working his way up. Go on, Gerard. Go on. There we go. That's better. You can rely on Gerard to at least score. That felt like a really good ball. Like, as a move, that felt pretty good, but I don't know why they weren't doing that beforehand. They have completely outplayed us. And yet we still ended up with more possession. This is what's been bugging me about this 4-4-2. I know this 4-4-2 can work, because I've gone almost undefeated in a, a separate save using pretty much this. But I don't only get this much possession. I think this is this is throwing me a little bit. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make a sub just to to rest so Narendana can come off. He's our best player on the pitch apparently because of that pass. That's all it took to be our best player was just one decent pass. In fairness, we came close a couple of times. We've hit the post. Yannick had a bit of a scramble. Could have been a bit closer than it actually is, but still, full one's pretty bad. Need to try and recover uh, from this. Fred Tissett banging him in for the eels. Fred Tissett's a real player. Watch his highlights of his goals for the OCL if you go onto the. Um, Official website for that. Oh, Spearling. That was such a. Oh, that's unfortunate. So we could have been a lot closer. We've not. We've come back into it a little bit. I'm wondering if the pressing in the higher line has changed this. I think if we've got a higher line, even. Go on, Gerard. Again. So Gerard's hit the post twice, or the post in the bar, had one goal dislodged to our side, which he was to be fair, so I guess we shouldn't really count that. Um, Yannick's come close, Spearling's hit the post. I'm still going to be mad at them. But that's not terrible. But yeah, maybe if we have a high line of engagement, that means when we do win the ball back, my players might already be slightly further up and in a better position. I hadn't really thought about it that way. So it means we start pressing them higher. Also might mean we're in a better position for that kind of long ball counter approach. Okay. So that's not great. We'll come back for another match, which I imagine might be against Motu 1. Assertive. I'm far from pleased. And the trick. Let's get a schedule. Yeah, let's just come back for the Motu 1. No, let's come back for the Sky Brights, actually. We'll come back for the Sky Brights, so I'll see you in just a second. Right, we're back, and I'm an indecisive liar. So, I did say we were going to go to the Sky Brights rather than Motu 1, but now I realise Motu 1 are playing at home, so we get to play on their clay pitch. So, that's what we're going to do. I just love playing on the clay pitch. And it's also works out that they're in a good run of form, I think, or reasonable run of form. Got an interesting looking formation. And I've made those tweaks that I mentioned, so I put the... Line of engagement up and put counter press on, and I've got distribute full backs on now as well to see what difference this might make. I made a few changes, so Makasina um, is back in again, Chance back in for Anderweg, and I've dropped Anderweg completely, because I don't think he's really up to it anymore. Spearling's come on for Narendana, because he's showing some good improvements, he needs the game time, and Waits come on for Manuel, because Manuel's not done a great deal. And then up front, Wallace who was our target man a lot of last season, is now back from the Under-19 Oceana Championships. So he's getting stuck. He's got a good partnership with Gerard as well. They like each other. They get on 
maybe Yannick can be that super sub. And yeah, that's pretty much 34 degrees uh, sunny on this flickering clear pitch because obviously it doesn't like the textures. Come on, show us what you can do. Also, I just like Motu 1. I think if I ever get sacked as manager of Ruru 2, or I get to the stage in the game where I need to move on to a Tahitian team, which I guess I will potentially at some point if I want to build up all these nations, then Motu 1 would probably be one of my favourite teams. I like the kits. Although on Twitter and a lot of those kind of databases and saves that are going on that you can see in the kind of content creator community, there's lots of really good kits. People clearly like busted out the Photoshop for this to make some fantastic looking kits, whereas I've mainly just used an old kit creator. It's been around for years. I, I don't think you can download it anymore, but I've, I've still got it. Um, and it's very basic. You've just got the kit templates, the overlays, the different colors. You put them on, import your logos, move them around a bit, which I've used for pretty much all the kits. But we'll see how things go this year. And when the next FM comes out, FM20, let's see if we can move into um, into a slightly more snazzy looking kit design. So nothing's really happened this half. Picking the good games out, one where we get thumped 4-1 and then one where nothing happens. Reasonable save. So Mutti one is just above us. Get it out. It was risky, but he got it out. Come on, Wallace. Lucky magic. Shows why you should be back at team. That's not really why, but at least we kept possession. It's a good ball. Oh, Gerard. First time. Jonathan Estevé. Steve. Stopped it. I think it's Estevé. Ooh, short option. Not what I told him to do, but promising. The ball's bobbling all over the place. He just gave him a good kick in the end. That's fair enough. Plus, Wake's one of our better free kick takers. Wake and Spearling, I think, are the best we've got. Oh, that's not good. Oh, this could be a bad season, couldn't it? Who was that there? Was that Lamb again? Yeah. Okay, so maybe Lamb isn't. Maybe he's not the best choice for this left back position, and me letting. Janssen go was a mistake. Maybe Janssen was uninspiring, but at least solid. Whereas Lam is... He's letting girls in now. I think after this I might go check the squad views actually and see... You know, if anyone's got more mistakes than normal. Because it feels like lamb has got more in there. Anyone else to come on? Chance. Not looking good. Now there's Gerard. Let's give him 15 minutes. McIntyre might need a rest soon. Not this match, because we have no one on the bench to replace him, but... Didn't feel like we were pressing them much then, considering all the space they had. Hmm. You just haven't looked dangerous at any real point. Like free kicks are the closest we're coming to actually having shots.
Yannick for Wallace for the fresh legs. Um, Cena on there. Hold on for Weaver. Change it to this one. Counter press on. I think it's going to do anything. I think it's going to be one of the things where I've clicked lots of buttons and nothing will actually have an impact. Also, it also helps if I press play, doesn't it, to take the pause off. The way it wants to come off is. It looks hurt. It does genuinely look hurt. Okay, fresh legs from Manuel. The assistant managers also notice our shots are um, coming from too far out. Okay, we've got it back. I get it out. Ideally, to one of our players, but. At the start of the game, I was talking about how I might like to move to Motu 1 at some point, but actually, I don't think they'd want me. Going Yan in. There we go. Super sub. Can we have Solshire? He's good at picking up on mistakes. He's, he's on his toes. Because he's mainly a poacher, I guess. Good. I mean... I don't feel like we particularly deserved it. I think Motu 1 have been a little bit better than this. Oh, I could tackle. Yan in again. Oh, good movement there. But he's not doing himself much favours because even though he scored, he scored as a sub. Which makes me think that this is his role now. Jared shoving people. Composed apparently. Shoving them with great composure. I think after that we will take a draw, because we've not deserved one. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, would, I would definitely take a draw at this point. It's a good goal. It's not really against the run of play if you look at the match as a whole, I guess. Yeah, that's a good goal. So we're dropping out to 10th. I think we're going to... We have to be careful. Because not only have we played more games than a lot of people around us, we could drop even more. Um, obviously, the club's massively in debt. Which isn't my fault. Um, but the board will look at it as in, we're in debt. We'll lower down the table. Players will become increasingly unhappy. I mean, yeah, I'm not that happy. Not surprised, but also I'm I'm not not happy. Right, so yeah, that's a tenth now. It's not great. It's a bit of a plummet. The squad. Apparently, no one's made any mistakes, leading to a goal. Um, I kind of feel like they have done. Okay, so we'll end uh, around about here. It's not been great, has it? Two losses. Uh, four one and two one. It's hitting a bit of a bad patch. I'll play the Skybrights match, and then we'll probably come back for like a cup double header, um, or at least the quarter final, and maybe for the Bora Bora game. That might be interesting, depending on how badly the uh, league is looking at that point. Uh, so yeah, thanks, thanks for watching us just slowly sink without a trace down the table. Hopefully, be better next time. <laughs>